So thank you everybody for joining me today on um, this presentation discussing UV LED solutions for fiber curing applications. I'm Pamela Lee and I am the product manager for the solutions that we will be discussing, discussing today. So to begin with, I wanted to provide a quick overview of um, the organization and what we do. Um, we are a global company with R&D and manufacturing locations worldwide um, with a deep portfolio of uh, photonic-based products that range from lasers and light sources to optics, power supplies, and whatnot. Um, and with over 7,000 employees worldwide and over a billion dollars um, in revenue each year, we do have um, a broad portfolio of um, products and markets that we serve um, with uh, automotive, industrial, medical applications just being a few of them. Here's a quick snapshot of um, our global fo footprint. Um, we are headquartered in Walton, Massachusetts, which is very near um, Boston, with um, 18 manufacturing centers um, around the world and 10 uh, administrative and sales offices as well. So who is Omnicure? Um, we are actually one of the many product brands under Excelatest, and our focus is on providing pre-configured UV-based solutions. Um, in over 30 years, uh, we've developed um, a number of lamp and LED-based um, products that have served um, a number of different markets. And uh, over this time, we've um, established a lot of ex expertise in various applications with fiber and wire and cable being one of them. So before going into um, an in-depth discussion of the various LED-based solutions that we have, I wanted to quickly review UV curing technology um, and how it provides uh, fast and durable results with a number of advantages. Um, UV really relies on polymerization um, of, uh, to, to ensure hardening of the material and um, cross-linking is what solidifies that material, whether it is um, an ink, adhesive, or coating. And um, spectral content and, um, and the amount of dosage or power is actually are actually very important factors when it comes to UV curing, as um, you do require a sufficient amount of light, and particularly in the case of LEDs, um, a match with the wavelength um, that's being emitted uh, to the photo initiated packages um, to, in order to begin that reaction. And so here you see um, the application of that material exposure to um, a light source such as our own, and this will complete the, um, the, the, the reaction. And so looking at LEDs in particular, um, they offer a number of benefits, um, ranging from productivity enhancements um, to the ease of integration in comparison to conventional um, UV lamps, as well as uh, environmental advantages. Um, I will save um, the specific examples of how these pertain to fiber applications later, but at a high level, these are some of the benefits that LEDs bring. Looking at um, LED solutions, there are always a lot of um, different products to choose from. And as an example, here are some of the Area Cure LED based um, solutions that we offer at, uh, through Omnicure. Um, many of these range from size, different sizes, different outputs, um, as well as a wide range of wavelengths. So, common um, UVA based uh, wavelengths that are available today and are, are quite popular and adopted um, are 365 nanometers, 385, 395, and 405 nanometers. So 
um, between the wavelength and the output requirements and, and the mechanical sizes, um, it is a challenge at times to select the right, um, right unit. So determining the requirements of your application and um, the application uh, integration needs are very important. And so that in particularly uh, refers to the radiance requirements, um, the dose and the process speeds um, in order to cure the material. Um, other elements such as working distance and homogeneity needs um, must also be considered. And um, the benefit though is after having um, exposure to so many different markets and a number of different applications, we have um, standard, uh, standard configurations which do tend to work well within certain industries. And I will be discussing that in the following slides. So when it comes to fiber applications, um, I've divided it into four categories, um, curing of coatings, primary, secondary being one, um, and followed by coloring um, underneath that and printing and marking and finally ribboning. So as you move across that spectrum, the um, application needs and, and the cure requirements are actually quite different um, and uh, the appropriate um, curing solutions that would work well for these um, differ. So here is a depiction of um, the different uh, curing solutions that would work well for fiber or coloring applications where um, the fiber is very small um, and you require a very focused beam of light um, on, on that material. So um, our F and 9225F products are fiber specific um, products that we've developed that have custom optics to, um, to direct the, uh, the light and all the photons onto a very narrow beam. Um, this ensures very high uniformity as well as an, um, a, a very optimal use of all of the um, all the UV light that's being emitted, so that there is no wasted energy. What we also do is um, ensure that this is uh, optimized over a long working distance, which supports very well um, the quartz rods that will or tubes will be that will be required in these applications so that you maintain um, a very high output and focused output at longer working distances. And as you move over to marking and ribboning applications, the um, cure area um, becomes wider and larger. And so different solutions and different um, products are applicable for those. So in looking at our first application sample of fiber optic coatings, um, you'll see um, the UV curing portion, which is typically um, a conventional lamp base um, solution here now can be replaced by uh, UV LEDs. So the objective here is to not only um, cure these coatings effectively, but to also um, reduce costs while increasing the productivity and maintaining the quality um, throughout. And so we are able to do this by um, having two of our 9225F um, LED systems mounted facing one another. And this allows um, the light to be reflected effectively from one unit to the next. And um, with the focus beam of light onto those fibers, uh, you are um, really optimizing that delivery. And um, here you can see that the dosage um, that's received um, at the, so at the um, a substrate is actually quite high due to the reflection. So here you'll see with just one head, um, one head you'll achieve only about 20 watts per square centimeters, but with um, the it, one and another inactive head um, facing it and just due to reflections alone, you've already increased it by 52% without even turning on the unit. So 
This implementation has actually um, been proven to be extremely successful at a number of customer sites and um, just by using 390 nan nanometer systems and we are able to re significantly reduce operational costs particularly um, in energy consumption and being that these units are over 10 times um, uh, have a t over 10 times its lifetime of lamps and um, the and the electric consumption itself is much lower not only is the ma maintenance and consumable costs um, go down but also the electrical and so we're also able to increase the productivity just by um, minimizing the downtime and not having any replacement of parts or any warm up or cool down required. So this has been um, a very effective way of, of integrating and using our units in um, draw towers. A second application sample that we have is um, for wire and cable marking. Um, and here, uh, we're able to achieve this with inkjet um, so that you can um, provide variable print, variable pro, variable printing um, and with you, the use of UV there's no um, induced physical stress on the cable um, and with LEDs uh, in particular you have um, very low heat and um, no damage to the jacketing material. And so in this implementation, we have our 9300 series LED uh, curing system integrated in combination with an inkjet printer and an optional pretreatment pre such as plasma. And so for this type of application, the benefits that come with LEDs is that you can support a wider range of substrates. So with um, the lower heat from these LEDs, um, not only are you able to um, cure, but there's no damaging damage resulting from that. Um, and what we found in these implementations at customer sites is that um, the markings are quite durable uh, and have excellent ink cohesion. So not only do you have um, no compromise in quality, but we're actually able to print very quickly. Um, another nice um, benefit of LED based systems is that with the small form factor, it is very easily scalable to support higher throughput. So simply by mounting another unit um, um, serially with the first, you're able to, to um, essentially double uh, the print speeds um, that you were able to do with just a single head. So we have a number of resources available um, that will provide more information on each of these two applications I had discussed and um, how these, this can be implemented as well as more details. Um, if you just click on these links or go to our website, you will find these resources um, uh, in the form of a white paper as well as a joint webinar that we conducted with Enercon and GEM. So the next, next part of the discussion I wanted to um, focus on is next generation UV LED solutions and um, other applications that this uh, can support. So what we've looked at um, to date is uh, UVA based um, solutions that uh, are focused on those um, wavelengths that I had discussed. So they do fall um, within the UVA band at 320 nanometers to 400 nanometers. So between here and here. And what you'll see is that um, in, in general, the higher wavelength options have um, a, a much higher um, efficiency. So the external quantum efficiency is a measure of um, the LED efficiency and how well it converts um, the electrons into to the number of photons out. Um, and over the last decade, um, the majority of the emphasis is on the, these higher wavelength options. However, um, there has been a shift um, as these these UVA has have plateaued um, to now focus on these lower wavelength options. And these wa wa lower wavelength, wavelengths um, provide benefit for surface cure, um, as well as um, I think the, the hot topic now is disinfection. So um, with those two driving forces, it really um, helps 
push the R and D and and um, development to uh, further optimize these these LEDs so that the output is um, is um, more optimized and that you're able to extract more light from them effectively. Um, so these technology breakthroughs have now allowed us to see um, a, a very um, steep uh, growth uh, in in the performance levels and the wall plug efficiencies of these lower wavelength um, LEDs. And in some of the work that we've done um, in testing these lower wavelength LEDs, um, 346 nanometers being one example, um, we found that um, these systems um, certainly have a much lower output um, than its counterparts that are more mature in the UVA spectrum. Um, but, um, however, the responsivity of the photo initiators um, for these lower wavelengths are actually um, quite good. And um, testing shows that the higher absorption of these low um, lower wavelengths can actually help overcome the output um, deficiencies that you, you see in comparison to UVA. So um, you don't require as much uh, output from UVCs than you do um, UVA systems. So here's a snapshot to show you um, the progression of the different UVC systems that we have developed over the years. Um, and as you'll see, the first generation was very expensive with um, very low output. Um, and it also differed in that we had to use uh, prepackaged LEDs um, for for the, the initial uh, entry into into this market. Um, now, as uh, these dye have become more mature, we can we have evolved from using those prepackaged LEDs to using the bare dye, and that enables us greater flexibility to um, pack that more densely and really control um, and optimize the output. Um, and so in our second generation, you see um, that not only has the cost come down significantly, um, lifetime has also improved, and the output has also um, become a lot more favorable. And uh, our, our most current uh, solution now that we've, we have is two nanometer um, LED option. And what we are able to do is leverage um, existing platforms to offer um, the same mechanical enclosure, the same developed architectures, um, but with the different um, wavelength options. So in this example, you'll see that a 272 nanometer now can offer over 1100 milliwatts per square centimeter peak irradiance. Um, and we have the flexibility to um, offer various sizes. So depending on your application needs, you can have a smaller form factor or a, a larger to accommodate um, wider substrates or, um, or, or faster throughputs. So we do have a range of solutions that include the LED head, the power supplies, cables, as well as PLC controllers for these. So as we're seeing um, new uh, materials um, and emergence of, of um, the need for uh, to overcome surface cure challenges, um, we'll, we'll see that UVC will be a very nice complement to um, the existing UVA platforms that are available. So thank you for your time. Um, and if you have any questions, we encourage you to visit us at our virtual booth or reaching out to us on our website um, and, and certainly uh, access the content and, and webinars that are available there for additional information on the applications that we spoke about today.